Hi, my name is Lyle Troxell. I'm the developer advocate um, for Wakanda, the open source web framework. I've written a little uh, code sample, a little project called Server Code Waltz. I suggest you go to the GitHub repo and get that. And from there, you'll see how to download this developer version or something later than this to do what we're doing today. Um, what you do to run the server, it's pretty simple. It's documented online. There's a link to it. You um, just pass it the, the uh, actual binary. You, you run the binary and you pass it the um, solution, uh, wa solution file. So just a little quick thing about... I have a, a project called Chickens, and it's part of a solution called Server Demo Solution, or I think it's just called uh, Server Demo is the name of it. And this guy is um, is just the base settings for the server. It loads all the projects. You can have multiple projects in that. It's the structure we use. So you pass that off and run it, and it will open. So it's opening the, the Chickens project, and it's running that on port 881, and then administrative port is port 8080. And, of course, you can pass parameters if you want to the server to run different ports. So let's go ahead and take a look at that thing running just to see what's going on. Um, this is the administrative conference uh, interaction. So you can see the there's the chickens running, and no data has been verified and all that because I have no data in it. Um, additionally, let me show you. Uh, this is, by default, how our client builds things. You can drop these widgets in. Uh, that's our studio. Uh, kind of studio and drop your widgets in and it's got a whole stack of framework that I'm not loading in this version. It's kind of the point is that we can do it without the Wakanda stack. So if you're familiar with something else like Sencha or uh, Backbone JS or the 50 other different JavaScript front end client uh, situations, you can use that. Um, here's another interface that I've built and let me just show you what's going on with the server. Um, well, let's go into the command structure. I think that makes sense. So this is the folder structure. This is that um, the actual solution file that defines what's going on. You can see inside here, a lot of XML right now. We're moving to JSON. Um, these are built by our studio. So you can either run studio and have them generated automatically or just clone my repo and start playing. Um, you see that I'm loading the chickens project. If you go into chickens project, there's a few other settings there. It's not that important. Um, in the chickens project, this guy here, it does a few things, including it says that there's a bootstrap JS file. So it's going to load a lot of things by itself, including the model. Um, and the model is going to be defined. It's going to be the catalog itself of the system. So this file here, right here, is um, the actual definition of the data structure. This file is generated. It used to be XML. Now it's JSON. Get, we're getting better. Um, it, it gets generated by the studio. You can tell it'd be hell to write this by your hand. This part up here is what the studio uses to lay down objects inside its visual interface. And this are actually the data classes. Here is chicken one of my data classes, and the collection name is chickens, and it's got attributes of ID and name and hatch date. They're not born, they're hatched. Um, and a related entry called coop. There's actually another data structure down here, another class down here called coop. And so chickens have a coop, right? That's the relation structure. And you can tell that, so this is this, this what's happening here is this JavaScript um, object gets instantiated and JavaScript becomes an object. And actually, uh, there is a JavaScript context being controlled by a C++ application. And that application, the binary on that is actually managing the database. So when it sees this, it builds the structure from that. So there's a lot of handshaking going on. And we're using the WebKit JavaScript engine because it's thread safe and it can do this. Um, it's, we're not using V8, we're using WebKit. All right, moving on. So how do you, if this is the way it's done with the studio, and I don't want to be doing this, um, here's the way we do it with the new language. And so this language is called the model API. It's, it's kind of new in the most recent version of Wak, only in the development environment of uh, uh, Studio. I'm sorry, of uh, the server, Wakanda server. So data store catalog um, has methods like, I'll load one of these files. We'll go for chicken. It has um, add class. Sorry to skip that. I'm assigning model, and I'm including these files. I go over here, um, model add class chicken. It's plural is chicken, it's collection type. It assigns that to local variable, and then we can start doing things like adding attribute. We'll add the gender. We'll add the breed. The breed's a related entity. It can, it's going to return breed. Gender is a string. Age is a long. But look, it's calculated. And the way that works is down here. You'll see that um, the chicken is still there. Age, we do some bindings on event listeners, right? So on get, anytime get gets fired, this is the function that actually gets used. And this, of course, this compute age, all it does is it takes hatch date, turns that into from current date into weeks, and you get age is always that. Now, that doesn't, and that's great for getting a, a pre-calculated definition, but it doesn't help you with 
uh, sorting and querying off that content, right? Because to do that, you'd have to collect all of it, build all that information, and then do sorting and stuff. You'd be driving yourself crazy. So whenever you do this kind of calculated thing, you also do an on sort event handler and a um, on query. And in this structure, it basically um, does the what's necessary to take the translation of I want people only four weeks or chickens only four weeks old into how what their their actual um, hatch date would be right it would it's going to do that calculation for you and if you want to know how that's done it's it's built it's designed pretty cool by laurent that would do the uh, uh, lead developer he's pretty cool um in this uh file which is in utilities under scripts all right also in utilities under scripts let's talk about generating some code let's go ahead and do that um right now we don't have an interactive mode with the server right you can run the server and it starts responding with rest uh json stuff and to do anything in it, you have a problem. Our studio and the server actually communicate quite a bit, and they do. It, that's done a little bit differently. You actually, you the studio actually launches the server, and in doing that, it can um, use a debug console and do a lot of really good integration. I'd actually recommend if you're going to do a lot of development to do studio as well, even if you're not going to use the front end side of the studio, uh, just because of that debugger, and also for the object uh, uh, visualization, it's pretty cool. But in any case. Um, since we don't have that right now, the only way for me to actually run code on the server is to either run it without the studio is to um, to run it by a HTTP request. So that's what I'm doing here. If you look in that that boot.js, which can load by default, there's actually two things um, that I'm I'm doing. I'm basically doing event handlers on the URL space, right? So right here we have a if anybody recognizes that it's basically data init as the first param first uh, part of the URL string, right? Uh, go look inside this JavaScript file and run that method. And that method is um, in this file. Here it is. And it expects two um, objects, request and response. And you, web developers, you should know what those are. Um, didn't mean to collapse that. So basically, I can take some you know, some parameters on how the, the query, um, I, can, uh, I can get a coop count. This is going to be generating coops. And then basically... Um, uh, basically, I delete all the data here if you want to delete it and then regenerate it here. And then, this is just for development environments, right? You wouldn't want to put this real time because you'd lose all your data. And then he, it, what's actually happening right here is you're running another um, function. And this function here expects a coop count. And then opens up a whole bunch of text files, right? And reads the content out of that. And then generates our model, including relationship objects, right? So let me just look at that code for a second. I'm going to make, I'm going to go through a for loop of how many I'm going to produce, and I'm going to make new DS coops. So this DS is the server side handle on the data, ser data server. So in the JavaScript context on the server, there is a DS object that gets generated when the context gets created by the C thread. So C thread generates a context and then instantiates inside that context an object called DS, which is a not a real object. It's actually a pointer in back to JavaScript or back to the C code. So then the C code takes all those contexts and it actually uh, determines generation of the content, right? So it's a handshake happened between JavaScript and the actual server and you don't need to be dealing with that, but you have a robust data relational database there, right? Uh, web server written in C, really fast, um, pretty awesome built by somebody that's been building databases since like the early 80s. So that's really cool. And you, um, so you're passing in an object, which is its attributes, and we're getting some coop names and adding them in. And then we save that coop, and then we go ahead and create some hens um, for that coop to live in that coop. And there's the hens, and here is how you assign this hen has a coop relation, and you pass it that guy. And then you save this one, and let's do a try catch, what the heck, but not actually do anything. Um, and so at the end of this whole thing, you actually get a build like somewhere in here. You get that. There's 100 coops were generated, 1,000 hens. You know what? We can probably do better than that. Let's have some more content. Let's have 10,000 coops. So it's going to take a second. I wouldn't normally do this through the client. Um, I'd probably set up a um, some kind of thing you'd be, you'd be checking regularly and actually updating to the user so there's some kind of feedback from them. Let's talk about this for a second. This is pretty cool. Um, the server by default responds to West REST catalog and builds a JSON object, which is the catalog. So there's breed, there's chicken, and there's coop. And then if you actually pass the parameter all, you get 
the entire content, all the attributes, what kinds they are and everything. Now, the reason this is really cool is that you can write a client side framework that auto loads this and then creates your local data content. And that's what we're doing. So um, on this page, if I go down here and I start looking at breed, the reason why this object exists is because on load it actually ran. So let's go ahead and first off, do we get all this content? Yeah, we got them all. All right, 105,000 hens and 1,100 roosters. Sweet. Um, let me show you our, con our framework. So there's our framework. What's really interesting here, you see that count? Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the network resources. It's blank right now, but as I scroll this, you're going to see stuff loading in because we don't actually have 106,000 records here, right? As I scroll th down, we're actually generating them. This um, object, it has event listeners and it has a local storage in the client and depending on how much local storage there is it keeps on doing requests back to the server it's pretty slick and the requests are of course rest um json requests and there's the request there's the response it's a lot of content it fills this content okay neat um but we're doing it without this framework this framework has a lot of heavy load a lot of widgets and such you might want to do your own something a little lighter so here this page here let's go ahead and go into the web folder all right, in the web folder. And in the web folder, I've got a client folder and I've got an index.html. And this is this is the new stuff in, in the, the server that we've just released in the beta version that basically allows you to not load our entire front end stack that the client uses and that we use jQuery and a whole bunch of widgets. Instead, you, we're just providing doing the data provider. And that's that DS object I was just showing in the client side. And basically it auto loads the, the catalog here from that JSON object. Um, this file right here, which is actually in the server structure, this web lib is actually with the server, and that right there scans this page and loads a whole bunch of stuff and builds a concatenated JavaScript and CSS file. And yes, we do want to put in the pipeline um, less and SAS and CoffeeScript. I'm sure we will as time goes on. All right. Um, so what happens in this page? We've got some HTML here with some IDs down at the bottom here. We're doing some um, add event listeners. We're not using any framework here, right? Just straight up. Um, and what happens here is uh, anytime somebody types something in the field, this guy fires. And what's happening here is the DS object. Again, that's object being generated by loader.js based off of the catalog. So we didn't have to change anything here. That it knows, right? Um, we pass it a query uh, string object basically from that field. And then uh, we're doing callbacks, right? So you pass it also the functions you want for the on success event. And it's going to return an event that actually has an entity collection. Now, this is not all of the data. This is a representation of content that's a part of the data. It's going to potentially limit it, and we are going to limit it. We're going to just take 40. And then on success of that, that restriction of 40 of those, we're going to get, we're going to call this method with the results, which is a JSON object, which this thing then spits in there. Element, element, dot name, and the long and the short of it is this guy, as you type in it, gets requests back from the server. Now, the other thing you notice is 100,000 records here, so this is only 40 of them. All right, let's take a look at some of the function, some of the stuff you can do in queries. Here, right here, we got DS. This is just history in my in my uh, console here. Chicken uh, query where gender equals male on success run this function, which is just going to do an alert. So how many males do we have in the database? 1146. Was that right? Yay! So you can see. It's relatively easy to interact with the uh, server. You've got to do on success, right? Because it is going back to the server and returning back. So whatever framework you want to use, we'll be doing more podcasts about that or video casts about that. What else do I want to show you? Showed you that, showed you that. This was cool. Good. Did I show you that? Oh, man, I'm losing track. Yeah, I did. Okay, good. Now, let me just show you. I think that's about it on the system. Yeah, I think that's what I want to show you. Let me just talk you about real quick about documentation. We have really good documentation about all this stuff. And as you walk through it, you'll find all the stuff I was talking about. That model API, API, uh, API creating um, creating new classes and adding attributes and all of that, that's in this documentation here. It walks all the way through it, how to do it in Studio. And I just showed you a little bit of how to do it. How to do it. But there you go, right? Outside of Studio. And the last thing, oh yeah, here's the catalog all structured telling you what the structure looks like if you want to build up your system for that. And I think that's what I want to cover. Uh, this whole GitHub, this whole thing is on GitHub. Please feel free. I'm Lyle on Twitter and Lyle on GitHub. And I'm, I'd love to answer questions about uh, Wakanda. Contact me. 
comment on the blog, whatever you want. I hope to see you around. Thanks for watching.